part of the process and that it is okay. And that even though it may look like complete chaos or disorder, that it is actually working in our favor so that everything that does not serve us can be completely reflected to us and take us to a new level of consciousness, which is ultimately what we want and what we have been asking for the past several years. I just feel like the shift is coming so fast and so furious and sometimes that can can feel a little chaotic and it can also make us feel like we want to shut down. While I think it is important for you to take some time and reflect and maybe journal, definitely meditate, definitely be present in your breath, in your space, I also want you to know that this is an important time to take action and action may not exactly mean like you have to get a ton of things done by the end of the year it just means that you really have to identify the chaos that's taking place and figure out how you're going to work through it and come from a calm perspective and an okay perspective that means don't be hard on yourself it means create a safe space Space for you to work through all of the changes and the chaos and the things that you need to clear out of your life so that we aren't bringing them into the new year and maybe not necessarily the new year although there is a lot of energy that culminates around the new year but also into the the phase where we have a rebirth which is in the spring i just want to tell you how much in your favor any triggers that you might be experiencing are working for you and definitely not against you even though it may feel that way that is truly truly not the case So I just really don't have anything planned necessarily for today's podcast. I just definitely wanted to talk to you about that because I know it hasn't necessarily been easy for me at all. I'm completely dealing with all the triggers that have to do with me working through the lack mentality um, and of course opening myself up to complete abundance and reprogramming my mind to really understand that I believe that I am worthy of all of the abundance that is trying to make its way towards me, but that I may still be blocking. I just want to remind you how much science is involved when it comes to the area of limiting beliefs. And that we may not be working through limiting beliefs that necessarily were created from us, but came from our ancestors. There was this scientific study. I think I talked about this before. I'm not sure, but I'm going to talk about it again. There's a scientific study that were done on mice where the mice were sprayed with this sort of cranberry and almond spray at the same time that they were sprayed they were also being shocked they were being electrocuted when those mice had children they would spray the mice with the cranberry and almond spray and not electrocute the children but the children would still react in fear as if they were being electrocuted when those mice had children so the great-grandchildren of the mice when they were sprayed they too reacted in complete fear as if they were being electrocuted this is because it is a fact that memories live in our dna and that they travel from generation to generation to generation. I want to remind you that a lot of the work that you are doing for yourself right now, it doesn't have anything to do with you other than the fact that you are on a journey to heal your ancestors and to make sure that this generational trauma doesn't go on to our children 
and our grandchildren. That in the moment that we heal, we are creating new energy and new DNA for those that come before us. So every time there is a trigger, it is extremely important that you take action and you go inward and identify the root of the trigger. I know I talk about this so much, but this message for me personally has been coming up in so many ways because I feel like I sometimes forget I get caught up in the drama of what is taking place that I go back to the old programming that I am trying to break through. I go back to the programming and I create even more chaos and even more drama surrounding my life. And it is unnecessary chaos, but it is also a um, direct manifestation that there are still traumas and there are still limiting beliefs that I need to work through and of course there is I'm only 38 years old and I honestly foresee myself really doing this work for the rest of my life and honestly I hope that I do (laughs) because I really come to a place where I enjoy the process of identifying a trigger going back and healing the trigger for me personally. I want to share a little bit of what has been helping me lately with this. As I identify the trigger, I go back and identify the root. And when I identify the root, I do this practice where I recreate a story that is not necessarily real. It isn't actually real at all. It's a made-up story that I create and relive in my heart so that I can replace it with another type of energy. Our brain can't tell the difference when something is happening or not happening. It doesn't understand what is real and what isn't. So the problem in that is that when we are constantly reliving traumas, we are adding more stress and more negative energy onto our beings, into our brain, because our brain actually believes that we're going through it again. So you can see why this is a program, why lack mentality is just a program that is going in cycles over and over, replaying itself. But when you create a different memory, when I replace it with something else, my brain doesn't know the difference. And it's so cool because my brain is already recreating the false, quote-unquote, memory that I've made up. So it's already using that as a program. So there was this time when we were children and we were very, very poor. My mother talks about only having $7 that had to last us throughout the month. So what she would do was she would buy a huge sack of potatoes and she would buy tortillas. And we would have tacos de papa, potato tacos, every single night. And when we were lucky, we had beans. I was drinking a lot of milk growing up as a kid and she didn't have enough money to, you know, buy me the amount of milk that I needed. So she would water it down. As I started to remember all of these patterns of lack and worry that my mom had, because you can imagine as a mother, she was she felt the weight of the responsibility for the household. My father was an alcoholic at the time, and so she had to like hide money from him and keep it from him so that we could actually eat. So what I'm doing is I'm going back and recreating a new story. And I really feel the difference in the story. I actually go back in my third eye and in my imagination and I just recreate a space of abundance of there was a overflow of food on the table and we weren't hungry and I'm actually creating these images of the table, of us eating, of us gathering and what it is doing 
as I practice this is it's actually bringing back memories when we did have an overflow of food and everything was good and everything was on the positive side and it was probably more positive than it was negative. But for whatever reason, my brain and maybe you find that the same happens with you is that my brain is focusing on the lack and not the part where it was full of abundance. So I'm recreating all these new stories, filling in the lack with abundance, and I'm finding all of the memories where it was full of love and full of abundance and complete opposite of the memories that I have ingrained in my head. So I definitely wanted to share that exercise with you. Another exercise that I am practicing is that I started off doing this one time a day, but I've found myself doing it maybe around four or five times a day now. I want to say that just today alone, I did this six times where I envision myself and I see abundance of light coming down from the heavens and I completely feel the energy radiating down onto my head and through my body, forcefully pushing out any energy that does not serve me and grounding itself onto the earth. And when I do that, I just remind myself how I am in control of my abundance and I am in control of what types of opportunities I attract And that nothing outside of me controls that. It is like a contract that I have signed coming to this earth and agreeing to be a child of God. That God is going to provide and God is going to take care of me. And I've been practicing doing that more and more. I think the reason that I went from doing it once a day to four or five or six times a day is that I am now catching every time I begin to feel worry or every time I begin to feel lack, I'm catching it faster and I immediately replace it with either that white light that flushes everything out or I replace it with abundance and a lot being on the table. And the table doesn't necessarily mean a table where we eat, but just the table where I work, the table where, you know, just in front of me, all of the prosperity and the abundance that I deserve that is sitting in front of me. So that has been really helpful. And it's also made me realize how many times a day I begin to worry. And this is directly tied to my mom and how many times a day she must have had to have worried with seven dollars for the entire month to try and provide for her family so i realize how much healing i'm doing for my mom for my grandmother i don't know exactly what her situation is but i know my mom picked the worry and the lack energy from somewhere. So I can only imagine what my grandmother's energy was like and so on and so forth. And I really feel like being conscious of this is also obviously shifting the energy that my son is around right now. Another thing that I've noticed is that when I practice this, he constantly comes up to me and he caresses my face in the most loving way. It's almost like he can feel the bliss and the energy that is pouring out of me and he's basking in it and he's letting me know. It's like we are completely surrounded with positive energy. So I wanted to share that that's a lot of what I've been doing. It definitely hasn't been easy and I think because I am identifying how many times a day I spend in lack, that's what's kind of also tripping me up is that, whoa, I've been spending so much time in lack energy and not in an energy that is completely a safe space full of abundance, trusting that God is going to provide. It's so important for us to constantly bask in this energy because when we do so, naturally we're teaching all of those around us to do the same. It's just a natural wave of energy that's taking place and in turn we receive more abundance and it's like this beautiful cycle 
of positive energy that's flowing our way. There are so many changes, but all of the changes that are coming my way are coming in my favor. And it's been incredible to see what initially feels like complete chaos turn into complete magic and expansion and growth and rooted in positive energy and something that is working in my favor. I also wanted to add that as I began to really clear out what wasn't serving me, began to do the exercise of receiving abundance and began to do the exercise of replacing those memories with positive memories, I began to receive an influx of opportunities. As soon as I began this practice, I can't stress this enough. I look at my calendar and it is back to back to back to back with really incredible opportunities, events, things that I am participating in. And then I'm also watching an abundance of money come to me. And it was right in the moment when I committed to putting myself first, making really challenging decisions to clear out the energy. And what's even crazier is that most of the times, the opportunities and the emails and everything that my calendar is filling up for in the next three to four weeks, they've all come when I'm practicing the light practice it's happening at the same time and i really believe it's a confirmation that i'm receiving as i'm practicing this that it is working another thing that is happening is that i'm receiving a lot of messages via my dreams i'm actually requesting and asking my guides for specific answers on certain things that I'm needing clarity on and they're delivering messages via my dreams which is totally a completely different topic that I'm going to hopefully discuss in the future because so much of my dreams are like revelations that are happening that can also be kind of scary hopefully in the future once I gain more clarity and more practice on what is actually taking place in my dreams I will be sharing that. So with the holidays and the triggers and the mercury and retrograde and all of those things, I just want to remind you to get excited. Get excited every time there's a trigger because you have work to do. That's all that means is that there's an area in your life that needs to be worked on. And with that excitement, take it on as like this great challenge of you being a hero to your family how you're saving. And it's not even saving your family. It's also saving humanity. It's saving the energy that surrounds you. We truly can't change the world outside of us. The only thing we can do is change the way we feel and change the energy that we exude. And we have to get rid of guilt. We have to get rid of lack. I think those emotions, as well as sadness, anger, and in some cases, hate, are part of the human experience, but for some reason, lack and guilt, I feel like we use them unconsciously without really knowing that we're using those emotions to attract certain circumstances that are not serving us. The same happens with sadness, the same happens with anger, but I feel it's on a completely different vibration because I feel like it's easier to identify consciously Um, and rectify sadness and anger. I feel like that propels us into action. But the guilt and the lack is more of a belief that we have where when we feel sadness and anger, we can identify it as an emotion. That's where the work lies, where we acknowledge we are the observer of those emotions and just do our best to not react Come from a place of calmness, identify what needs to change, change it, and move forward. And I know how hard that is because I'm the first one that gets fired up and wants to take off my earrings the moment I feel someone has crossed me. And that doesn't serve me at all. I'm only generating energy that I do not want in my life. The best thing for me to do is to come from a calm, safe space and react from a place of love for myself 
first and foremost, putting myself first, because then I give permission for everyone else to put themselves first. And we're not living from a place that's a lie. We're living from a place of authenticity where we're not doing things out of making others happy, but we're doing things out of making ourselves happy. And that's the only way we can truly generate peace and joy is by meeting our own needs first, not meeting other needs Meeting someone else's needs is only going to put us in a place of misery and sadness, resentment, and anger. But again, those are triggers to let us know, hey, you're not putting yourself first. Why? Are you coming from a place of fear? What are you scared of? What do you feel you need from this person that is maybe mistreating you or is not bringing a vibration that you wish to have in your life? Why are you attracting this in your life? It really just takes so much work. So I just want to tell you that I'm doing the work and that I want to invite you to do the work as well. And then it's just really, truly part of our journey. I really didn't have anything planned. I didn't know what I would be speaking on today. I just really wanted to catch up with you. I miss you so much because I feel like we haven't connected one-on-one, just you and I in, in such a long time. So I wanted to make sure to do that. Head over to iTunes if you like the content that's being produced on Let There Be Lose. Give us a five-star rating and don't forget to leave a review. Make sure you're following on Instagram at Let There Be Lose. And then also don't forget that Patreon is now live. We have three tiers. The Warrior tier for a contribution of $3. The Warrior Princess tier at $11. And the Warrior Goddess tier at $22. There's exclusive content that is being released on Patreon only where you get more of an insight more of information extended podcast episodes there's exclusive events that happen over there aside from also having extended content for example i'm having a special screening at lionsgate for a film called perfectos desconocidos with a wine tasting from boca roja baja wine adventures and also hors d'oeuvres and all of this is free i'm giving invites to my warrior goddesses first um so i'm doing really fun things like that that are not open to anyone else. So if you are interested in getting more behind the scenes, just really being part of the team and contributing to the content that I'm creating, if this calls you, head over to Patreon. There's a direct link in my bio on Let There Be Lose. December is the last month that I will be doing energy clearings at $75. I'm moving away from that completely. My rate is going to go up and it's going to be an entire four to six week program that I'm modifying right now and perfecting for when I launch. So if you want to take advantage of the $75 rate, I will be releasing the energy healings in the next week. For those that don't know, really quickly, an energy clearing is something that I was receiving for an entire year before I decided to get certified as an energy healer myself. It was something that really helped me as I was moving through blockages and I really feel like it prepared me for let there be lose in so many ways it cleared so many limiting beliefs for me to even be able to start producing this type of content and just put me in the perfect space i loved getting them done so much that i went ahead and got certified not only to service myself but also to begin being of service to other women so if your intuition is calling you to get an energy clearing this clears energy that has blockages it also includes energy that may be tying you to other people to traumas it's a really in-depth clearing if your intuition is calling you to get this done stay tuned on instagram for when these will be released here in the next week i love you all so much may the light within grow stronger Turn to the one. Return to the one.